Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Texas Fly Fishing Report. This is the companion YouTube channel to www.texasflycaster.com where you can go to find highly detailed information about fly fishing in Texas. Hi guys, my name is Shannon and this is the Texas Fly Fishing Report. Today is Friday, June 1st, 2018. So this is the first report of June and it's a mixed bag of things going on. Uh, I always try to start locally right here in my own backyard and what we've had here is just a brutal, brutal change in the weather over a matter of five to seven days where temperatures, it'll be supposedly 104 here in North Texas tomorrow and so that's taken me off the water and anybody else just about as well. It's kind of strange in another way because not only is it hot, it's very windy at the same time. So. I didn't fish any this week. Uh, I'm sure the fish are out there, but they're probably suffering greatly from this heat on the flats where I fish. As you know, I fly fish Lake Ray Roberts, which is unique in Texas. It's got acres and acres and acres of, of freshwater flats that we fish on for carp and bass, sometimes gar. Mostly carp, though. That's what we're known for. Um, so that's what's going on here. It's been really rough this week. The great thing is next week looks awesome. The temperature drops about 10 degrees to 93 and uh, and that's awesome. Uh, and the winds 5 to 10. So that might let me actually go to a couple places that I've been had on my list. I've made two so far. I've got three or four more to go. Three or four more di different lakes to go to. And we'll see if we can get there. But I, I want to hit my home water at least once or twice. Another thing that was uh, kind of local to me is I'm now a TFO ambassador and I'm trying to make the best of that and get a hold of some of their new products. And I did. This week I got in and got an Axiom 2. It's a pretty fantastic rod on first cast, but I was casting on dry land and it just doesn't seem right to really um, do any kind of testing or any kind of a uh, reviews without getting it out on the water. So this will be the rod that will be on the water with me next week as I go out and uh, hopefully, weather permitting, this is a eight weight by the way, uh, weather permitting uh, fly fish for carp on Ray Roberts. Throughout the state it's pretty interesting actually. I, I've finally been able to catch up with some of these uh, reports like Texas Insider Fishing Report which is conventional and of course you'll get the scroll at the end from TPWD which breaks down all uh, the salt water and uh, lakes that are of value in Texas. It's up to you after that to interpret that into what works for you. I know that for example some of the guys I talked to like Danny Scarborough in Houston, Texas, he's got HoustonFlyFishing.com uh, he's been catching a whole lot of bowfin on Lake Conroe which is uh, if you want exotic, this is like one step beyond the uh, the gar, as far as I'm concerned. These these things are so strange and slimy looking, they're like eels. But anyway, that's that. Danny Scarborough, Texas, I mean, uh, HoustonFlyFishing.com. Uh, so in the, the reports I've gotten and gleaned from, you know, of course, my main interest is salt water because it's, it's just almost always on. And in salt water, we've got... Uh, a mixed bag as the, as the water heated up really quickly and they still have wind out there too but you want to look at Matagorda area that's my impression of what, I, what I'm hearing and seeing for, for count for a good count of specs and a uh, fluctuation but it's still a fairly good count in redfish uh, I can't overemphasize watch Texas Insider Fishing Report for your saltwater points of interest from top to bottom all the way from Sabine down to South Padre Island and it almost never stops nowadays uh, just because the weather never gets cold enough. We've never had any freezes in 20, 30 years now I guess on, on the Texas coast that fish kill freezes. We had one but it was so minor it didn't even count really uh, and that was very, very recently but now um, the fish are very healthy, the conservation efforts have kicked in over the last few years, maybe decade, 10 years and the fishing there is almost always really good and something to report on something to go do so check out the texas gulf coast we're going to go to the scroll it's a short report make sure you check in i think i'll roll the review or the actual live fishing with this rod into uh the report next week or it may be a, a individual report that i break out with video from the skiff using this uh 
what I think is a really great rod, just on first impressions. It's a, it's a very evenly, uh, evenly balanced rod as far as the action. I picked it up and I was, uh, I could immediately cast it and didn't have to think about it very much at all. I'm used to much faster action rods, it has some thinking when I have to slow down. This one doesn't require that at all. So I'm, I'm intrigued by this rod. I want to see what it'll do for distance and accuracy. Distance is never a priority with me. I should be able to get close enough by my own old man's stealthy standards. And uh, accuracy is, is number one of importance to me and what I do. So thanks for watching. Watch the scroll at the end. If you got any information on fish where you are, be sure to send it to me. I know that the, the one thing I saw besides, besides all this is that apparently there's a, a lot of brim action up on the, uh, the uh, Texas, Arkansas, Oklahoma, well, it's Arkansas, I guess, uh, Sabine. Uh, for sunfish, huge ones, the size bigger than my hand. They're incredibly large, so that's interesting. But anyway, have a great weekend, and we'll see you next week on the Texas Flycaster channel. And of course, you can always check in in between times at www.texasflycaster.com. Thanks for watching. We'll see you later.